Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. Prince Harry said the happiest time of his life was when he was far away from the royal family. Prince Harry and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex officially down as senior royals on March 31, 2020. Many fans were stunned by the decision made by a couple who seemed to have everything. It's been reported that even Prince Philip couldn't understand why his grandson wanted to leave his beautiful house, home country where he had influence, and stop performing royal duties which included helping others. But Harry previously admitted that he was happiest when he was far away from the palace, his family, and royal life altogether. Prince Harry said these were the happiest times of his life. In 2017, journalist Angela Levin spoke to the now Duke of Sussex in a candid interview about his partying ways when he was in his 20 seconds, his time in the military, and wanting out of the firm. Harry told her that his time in the army were some of the happiest of his life, and that's because he was accepted as someone other than a royal. Levin said, He said to me that he was the happiest in the army because he was just Captain Wales, he wasn't Prince Harry. He loved being out in Afghanistan. Why Prince Harry had to leave Afghanistan early. However, all good things come to an end and for Harry that happened 10 weeks after he arrived in Afghanistan when his position was leaked to the media. Levin stated that he was brought back because it became too dangerous for him and the soldiers. The prince admitted. I felt very resentful. Being in the army was the best escape I've ever had. I felt as though I was really achieving something. Harry confessed that he even considered quitting royal life then. He said, I was just Harry. I felt I wanted out of the royal family, but then decided to stay and work out a role for myself. This general wants Harry to return to England. Perhaps being away from the royal spotlight now is bringing Harry happiness, no one knows for sure. But one person from the prince's past who was involved in the plan to send him to Afghanistan in 2007 is hoping Harry's move across the pond isn't permanent. Former Army Chief General Sir Richard Dannett said, Harry and Meghan are very much involved in other things and that's their life choice and I don't criticize them for that. But it means that he is not as available, not supporting in such a high-profile fashion, the work of charities and the needs of veterans. We miss him and I hope that in a change of circumstances that I can envisage, he returns to take up more traditional royal duties in this country. General Dannett revealed that he even wrote Harry a letter pleading with him not to stay away from the UK for long because the veterans need him. Another analysis. The truth about Jill Biden and Prince Harry's friendship. Dr. Jill Biden will become the first lady of the United States in January 2021 but she's already spent eight years in the role of the second lady. In that role, she traveled the world and met all kinds of people. One of those people is Prince Harry of the United Kingdom. Although Harry moved stateside in 2020, stepping away from royal duties and settling in Southern California with his wife, Meghan Markle, his relationship with the soon-to-be first lady Jill Biden dates back before the marriage. The pair apparently get along so well that after a 2014 visit to London, then Vice President Joe Biden jokingly quipped, she spent too much damn time with Prince Harry. Harry may not be a bachelor anymore, but that doesn't mean that the friendship between him and Jill has cooled. Let's take a look back at the trajectory of this friendship, which dates back to 2013. Jill Biden and Prince Harry bonded over the military. It seems that Prince Harry and Jill Biden first crossed paths in 2013 at a reception in Washington, D.C. The event was honoring both American and British wounded soldiers, an issue resonant for both Harry and Jill. Harry served in the British military, while Joe and Jill Biden's late son, Beau, was also a veteran. They cemented their friendship further in 2014 when Jill traveled to the United Kingdom without Joe. Harry's 2013 visit to the United States inspired him to launch the Invictus Games, and Jill went to support both Joe and Harry. The 2016 Games took place in Orlando, which brought the two friends together once again. Joe Biden quipped, I read in The Guardian, or one of them, and it says, I'm paraphrasing, everywhere Prince Harry went, he had this blonde woman on his arm, the vice president's wife. Their friendship attracted more scrutiny in the lead up to the 2020 US presidential election. However, speaking at time, Harry and Meghan Markle encouraged US citizens to get out and vote and to reject hate speech, misinformation, and online negativity, which President Trump took as a dig against him. Whether that's what they meant, 
given Harry's friendship with the Bidens. It wouldn't be all that surprising if that was the candidate he privately supported. Joe Biden is expected to be sworn in as the 46th President of the United States in January at an outdoor inauguration ceremony. Another report. A critic believes this one moment was when Meghan Markle's reputation began to unravel. Meghan, Duchess of Sussex, joined the royal family in 2018 and has since been faced with widespread criticism. While some believe may think Meghan has been hit with unfair press treatment since she became Prince Harry's girlfriend in 2016, a critic can pinpoint to one moment when her image really took a hit. Meghan Markle's reputation began to unravel in South Africa in 2019. Lorraine Kelly, a British TV personality and host of the show Lorraine, believes Meghan's image began to unravel in the public eye in South Africa in 2019. For those who need a refresher, Meghan and Harry went on a royal tour of Africa in the fall of 2019. In South Africa, the couple also filmed a documentary about their trip. Called Harry and Meghan, An African Journey, the documentary showed royal followers their work on the continent as well as some personal confessions from the Sussexes. In one interview seen with reporter Tom Bradby, Meghan revealed she was struggling under the royal spotlight, especially when she was pregnant with her son Archie. There had been a lot of attention on Meghan's humanitarian work before she was a royal as well as during her time as the Duchess of Sussex. However, Kelly believes the documentary made people pay more attention to her personal struggles instead. Kelly said, It just seems terribly sad. They could have done so much good, but it started to unravel in South Africa. She was highlighting incredible charities, but it got overshadowed by her interview. And all the great work they had done, nobody was talking about that. Meghan Markle has been warned that her reputation could get even worse. Meghan and Harry are currently involved in a lawsuit against Against Associated Newspapers Limited, ANL, the company that owns a number of popular British papers like the Daily Mail and Metro. The Sussexes claim the newspapers allegedly invaded their privacy. However, according to some law experts, this lawsuit could potentially do a huge deal of damage to Meghan's already fraught reputation in the UK. In trying to disprove the Sussexes' claim, ANL's legal team could unveil distasteful information about Meghan. Attorney Mark Stevens said, If I was advising Meghan, I'd be saying get out now. The risk is that how she curates her reputation, what she allows into the public domain, and what she doesn't, are now things that will be picked over by lawyers in cross-examination. The stakes are enormous because at the moment her reputation is not damaged particularly. Meanwhile, Eric Schiffer, chairman of Reputation Management Consultants, said Meghan and Harry's lawsuit against media outlets is simply an unwise move. He said, It's a choice that I think many would say is not only unwise, but shows a further level of lack of sophistication in their media approach. If they think they're going to create a big chilling effect on the media, it's just going to escalate a desire for the media to uncover more. And so on to other news and... We thought we would share one of my favorite videos of the Sussexes. We just love how they're in full mom and dad mode. Now watching it back, we can now imagine the Sussexes doing this with Archie especially, as he is a little older now. This video is from November 6, 2019. The Sussexes surprised their neighbors in Windsor, at a coffee morning for military families in a community center located, in the heart of the army housing estate. Marks one year since Meghan made her first appearance at the Festival of Remembrance. And this has to be one of our favorite moments from the day. Meghan with a veteran, and she gave a shout out to his granddaughter called Shelby. She's got a sweet laugh. Bless her. The Field of Remembrance is a memorial garden organized annually by the Poppy Factory. In Westminster Abbey, the Duchess of Cornwall is the patron of the Poppy Factory. It was Harry's seventh year in a row attending the Field of Remembrance. Harry used to attend with his grandfather, Prince Philip, but that changed in 2016, when he retired from public duties. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more LMT videos about your favorite stuff.
for coming soon subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one. Stop.